Good afternoon. There are many ways in which God's relationship with us is different from any other relationship that we have. Today, I'd like to talk about one way in which it is different, and this may be the most important difference of all. We tend to live in what is known as transactional relationships, that is, relationships that rely upon reciprocity. These are like living life in a business deal. You do your part, and in return, I'll do my part. We have mutual obligations or commitments to each other that we need to uphold in order to keep our relationship going. We see this, for example, in traditional marriage roles. The job of the husband is to earn the money, and the job of the wife is to do the cooking and cleaning and housekeeping. It's not just in marriages. Think of your friendships. You're nice to your friends. You listen to their boring stories, as long as they're nice to you and listen to your boring stories, which of course aren't boring, are they? Perhaps we see transactional relationships most strongly at Christmas time, when it comes to giving gifts. It is extremely awkward if you receive a gift from someone and have nothing to give them in return. Or if you give someone a thoughtful, expensive gift, and they give you a $10 Amazon gift card. This transactional way of understanding relationships permeates our entire world. We see it, for example, in a parent who is nice to the obedient child, who keeps their room clean, who makes good grades, but is impatient with the rebellious child who never seems to get anything right. It's as though we go through life with an invisible balance in mind, and we're trying to keep things even. We're resentful if we believe we're doing more for someone else than they're doing for us, and we feel guilty or inadequate if we think they are doing more for us than we're doing for them. And it takes a lot of energy to keep track of all of this. By the way, our invisible balances aren't necessarily very reliable. Some of us overvalue what we do in relationships and become resentful that other people aren't doing more for us, while others of us undervalue what we do for others and we live with a constant guilt that we're not doing enough. Now, because trans this transactional mindset dominates our relationships with each other, we assume that our relationship with God operates in the same way. And to be honest, you can't blame us for thinking this, because this is exactly what we find in many parts of the Old Testament. For example, toward the end of the book of Deuteronomy, Moses gives his final speech to the Israelites as they prepare to enter the Promised Land. And for several chapters, he goes on describing a transactional relationship with God. If you obey God's commands, he will bless you with wonderful gifts. But if you disobey God, he'll respond, he'll reciprocate with horrible curses. We can read passages like these and come away from them thinking that God treats us just like everyone else. <laughs> and then, then we come to the good news of the gospel. In Christ, God has established a new covenant with us, a new relationship with us. And as Jesus said when he instituted the Lord's Supper, it is a new covenant in his blood. Back in ancient times, the traditional way to form a covenant relationship was through the use of blood, through the blood of sacrifices. And now Christ is our sacrifice. It is through his blood that our covenant with God has been created and confirmed. Or as Hebrews chapter 7 puts it, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. And this new covenant, this better covenant, this covenant that we now know through the blood of Christ has nothing to do with this transactional way of understanding relationships. One way to look at it is to say that God does his part. He offers us blessing and life and joy and purpose and so many other things beyond our wildest dreams. And on the other hand, all we have to do is simply say, yes, please. 
I'd like to offer another way to look at it. If we want to continue to think of our relationship with God transactionally, like we do with other relationships. Let's go back to that image of a balance, like the scales of justice. God loads up more goodness and blessing and kindness on his side than we could ever imagine. He loads so much on it that it is impossible for us ever to try to be able to balance the scales. But Christ, through the wonderful sacrifice of himself on our behalf, puts his thumb on the scale and pushes our side down. Through the power of his crucifixion, our side is pushed down so that the scales are balanced. When we receive and accept and joyfully come into an understanding of what Christ has done for us, our relationship with God comes into balance. In fact, I'd say our entire lives come into balance. And it's not because we've done our part in some transactional relationship. It is because Christ in love says to us when we're worried that we're not good enough, that we're not doing enough, that somehow we're just not measuring up. Christ says, don't worry, I've got this. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, free us from the transactional way of viewing our relationship with you. We know that your pathway of love actually obliterates the concept of a transactional relationship with everyone. That as we follow your example, we joyfully set aside any idea of only doing for others if they do for us. But again, as we follow your example, we joyfully give of ourselves to others without any thought of return. Even more so, help us to recognize that this is our relationship with you through the blood of Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.